Welcome back to First and Denton, ladies and gents. I'm Seth Wickman, and week 10 is complete. Wild, because just yesterday, man, it felt like I was coming in here to cover week one. Time flies. All right, anyways, we had two games here over the weekend with the Broswell Bengals and the Denton High Broncos. Let's look at the Bengals first. Now, the Bengals faced off against the Hebron Hawks, who are currently fighting for a playoff spot. The Bengals were coming into this one on a four-game losing streak, with the most recent one being from the Capel Cowboys, 53-0. The Hawks were coming into this one 4-4 four four after losing to the Louisville Farmers, 39-14. Jay Lathan is in the studio, as always, to show us how this one went. What's up, Jay? Seth, Hebron is on the verge of postseason play, and the Bengals are looking to play spoiler. Let's go to the highlights. Going to start off here, this is Hebron's Asen McCray-Jones with a nine-yard touchdown run, getting Hebron on the board early, 7-0. And McCray was not done here as he's going to take a cut and turn on the Jets here as he's going to go all the way here. And he's just shot down at the three with a 52-yard run. This is going to lead to a field goal, making it 10 to nothing, Hebron. And this is going to be Patrick Creighton Jr. right here. He's going to roll out to the outside, and he's going to throw one up. And that's Sheldon Armour. For the 40-yard gain, and this is going to set up the next play here, which is going to be Creighton Jr. taking it himself as he's going to punch it in here from four yards out. That makes it 17 to nothing, Hebron, still in the first quarter. Now right here for Hebron, they're going to fumble the ball, and that's Thomas Battle who's going to make Antonio Dennis fumble, and it's recovered by Aaron Grant for Broswell, and they do nothing with this. So it's still 17 to nothing in favor of Hebron. And that's going to be Asen McCray Jones once again, 12 yards out, making it 24 to nothing. They're just pouring it on here. And they are not done right here. This is going to be Marcus Johnson who's going to slip through a block, tell a defender, you too, little, weave his way around another defender and turn on the burners as he goes full blown beast mode here for 52 yards into the end zone, making it 31 to nothing as the Hawks just continue their thrashing. As Patrick Creighton right here drops back. He's going to step up in the pocket. Juka defender. Tell him get off me. And high steps into the end zone. Now it is 38 to nothing in favor of Hebron. Hebron goes on to win this game by a final score of 38 to nothing, advancing to 5 and 4 on the year. Seth, this is five straight losses for the Bengals. What stats contribute to this tumble for Broswell? Yeah, Jay, not much positives for Broswell there, and they have been on a very sad tear lately. They had 98 total passing yards between the two quarterbacks, Braden Mansell and Jeremiah Ship. The run game never got going like it used to. Adeloho has been absent. The defense and offense just really struggled. I mean, Hebron ran all over them. Nothing could get going for these. That's two straight games with zero points on the board, not even a field goal. And it looks like it's not going to get any better as they play the Geyer Wildcats later this week. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to a team that has been hungry for a win. Man, they have been starving. Broncos were coming into this one ready to fight. They were put up to the task of fighting on the Granberry Pirates. The Broncos were deep in a six-game losing streak going into this one with the most recent being against the Ryan Raiders, 55-14 while the Pirates were also on a seven-game losing streak themselves after losing last week to the Azel Hornets. Jay, how did this one turn out, man? Seth, both of these teams are struggling, to say the least. They're playing for pride at this point. Let's go to the Collins Complex to see who will earn their second win of the year. Going to start off here. This is Terrence Lopez who takes snap. He's going to drop back here and find his favorite target. That is Cole Sanders for the 22-yard gain. This is going to set up this next play, which is a field goal by Sergio Melkor. And it is good getting the Broncos on the board, 3 to nothing to start this game. Now we go on to the next clip. Melkor is going to hit a pooch kick right here, and that's going to be Elijah Johnston who's going to take this ball, and he's going to go. He's going to find a crease and take off, and, and he's going to score with a 66-yard return for a touchdown. This now makes it 7-3 to three in favor of the Pirates. Now, Terrence Lopez, once again, going to find his way and truck a defender into the end zone from six yards out, making it 10-7 Broncos. And right here, Denton High, once again, this is going to be Reggie White, who's going to find a crease, bounce off two, three defenders, and keep those feet churning there as he's going to get in the end zone. That makes it 17-14 Broncos. And this 
Bronco defense is not done here. They're going to force a fumble. This is going to be recovered by D Denton High, and that is Braylon Young. And this is going to set up their next offensive drive right here. Is this going to be Terrence Lopez getting in the information? And he's going to take the snap here, and he's going to take it, go to the outside, and he's in. That's going to be a touchdown right there from five yards out, making it 24-14 to 14 in favor of the Broncos in the third quarter. And for Granberry, that's Hayden Meyer to Jackson Arnett, who's wide open, and he's streaking down the sideline. Nobody in sight, 60 yards for the score, making it 24-21 Broncos in the third quarter. And Terrence Lopez says he wants to put the game away here as he's going to take it and do it himself, running through the sideline, gets a key block, and dives into the end zone for 14 out. And that is going to be says out at the one. So J.D. Davis says, I'll help you out here. And he punches it in and makes it 30 to 21 as they mix the extra point in the third quarter. And we have a fumble right here. And that's going to be recovered by Malachi Bond for the Den High Broncos. And now Terrence Lopez looking to strike once again for the Broncos. He's going to go to the edge of the end zone and throw one up. And that's going to be caught right there. That's J.D. Davis, who's going to be tackled just shy of the end zone. And they're going to be at one. And he says, you know what? That's fine. I can do it again. And I'll get my score. This time he punches it in, makes it 37-21 going into the fourth. That would be the final score as the Denton High Broncos go on to win 37-21. Congratulations to the Broncos for their first district win on the year. Seth, Terrence Lopez has been nothing but electrifying since he took reign of this offense full time. What did the stats have to say, Seth? Yeah, man, I can't believe it. They got to win. I was so happy for them. I knew they were going to do it. Never doubted them for a single second. Terrence Lopez had a night, 193 pass yards, 63 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns. And then Jaden Davis also had a night himself with 89 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Uh, defense caused those two turnovers, and man, the offense capitalized, and they got a score. That's some complimentary football, baby. All right, now the Broncos next week travel to the Alito Bearcats to take them on. So both teams have just one game left of the season, and neither of which are going to be headed to the playoffs, which is upsetting. But next week, we have Ryan and Geyer, who are both playing with house money, as both teams have are a lot for the postseason. Yes, sir. All right. That being said, that will do it for us here at First and Denton. Thank you for watching. And I'm Seth Wickman. And I'm Jay Lathan. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next week on First and Denton.